the hemisphericity of depression is, is quite complex and it would be something like would need, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to go into and probably with a, with a flip chart so I could mm. draw diagrams. But one fairly simple to explain difference is that when people are in certain stages of depression, uh, and perhaps at all times in depression, they can become over empathic so that they feel not just pain in here, mm. but pain everywhere, <clears throat> that mm. everyone is suffering, that the whole world is suffering. Mm. And they claim to be responsible for things they can't possibly be responsible yeah. for. So, for example, uh, I had a patient who was a lawyer, uh, therefore an intelligent woman. She thought that she had uh, committed a murder in rural Wales that was hundreds of miles from where she had been at the time. And I had another patient who claimed that he'd started the war in Bosnia. So you take on the, you, you empathise so much with the whole world that you're overwhelmed with a kind yeah. of hopelessness and sadness and paralysed by it. Uh, but when people become frankly psychotic in the sense that they believe deluded things, mm. this tends to be like all psychotic states, more associated with left hemisphere preponderance, which is very interesting. So we know this because there are lots of conditions uh, neurological diseases, uh, strokes, tumours uh, and epilepsy, which give us an insight into what happens to somebody when the right hemisphere or the left hemisphere is damaged. Mm. And many of the things that happen are these very interesting psychotic syndromes, starting off with simple paranoia, but also the um, things like Capgras and Fregley that we talked about, but the host of others. And almost all these psychotic states, when they happen after an injury or a, um, some kind of brain deficit in any case uh, um, being inflicted, they are practically always dependent on the left hemisphere. The right hemisphere is no longer functioning properly.